Hello everyone and welcome to this interesting live session on TensorFlow 2.0. In this session, I'll be discussing the mindset behind the release of TensorFlow 2.0 Alpha. Then we'll have a look at a few of the shortcomings of the previous versions. And moving forward, we'll see the changes made. And finally, I'll end this session by explaining how you can upgrade your code from the previous version to version 2. Now, since the open source release in 2015, TensorFlow has become the world's most widely adopted machine learning framework, catering to a broad spectrum of users as well as use cases. In this time, TensorFlow has evolved along with rapid developments in computing hardware, machine learning research, and commercial development. It's time for an upgrade now. So TensorFlow 2.0 has arrived with a focus on ease of use, developer productivity, and simple intuitive APIs. Now with the focus on ease of use, the most important aspect is the ease of execution, which is a central feature of 2.0. It aligns users' expectations about the programming model better with TensorFlow practice, and it will make TensorFlow easier to learn as well as apply. We'll understand what exactly eager execution is later in this video and how useful it is. Now the support for more platforms and languages and the improved compatibility and the parity between these components via standardization on exchange formats and alignment of APIs is a key feature of the version 2.0. And not last but not least, the removal of deprecated APIs and the reduction in the amount of duplication, which earlier caused confusion for users, is now removed. Now, let's have a look at a few of the shortcomings or the problems that people faced earlier. One of the problems that people faced was they needed rapid prototyping. They needed easy debugging and there was a lot of clutter. So let's take an example of a small code of geometric series sum. So in PyTorch, which is another deep learning framework, it looks something like this. If you want a code, it's basically eight lines of code or seven lines of code. As you can see here, it's so small. While the same code, if we see in TensorFlow, it would look something like this. Now, as you can see, the code is lengthier and harder to understand in case of TensorFlow. And we talk about design. Earlier, there was a construction phase and then an execution phase. The construction phase was where you would build a graph and the execution phase was where you would evaluate the graph and then create a session, then initialize all the variables and so on. And it's harder to understand when compared to other frameworks as just now we saw. And it was hard to debug as well. Now suppose instead of multiplication, you go for division and you run it for the same session and you run both the addition as well as division in the same session to get the sum of suppose 1, 1 plus 1 by 2, 1 plus 1 by 4, 1 by 8, and so on, then the results become unpredictable. Now this happens because TensorFlow runs these in parallel and fails to see any dependencies between the operations, which are the addition and the division operation. Now TensorFlow does not tell you where the error is coming from, if there is any, for small examples, it's easy to find, but for codes that have a lot of functions, it can be tricky to debug. Now, TensorFlow 2.0 is here now, and a lot has changed in terms of the execution and the functions and the formatting. So let's understand what exactly has changed in TensorFlow 2.0. So the first and foremost topic what I'm going to discuss is eager execution by default. Now, if we take the previous example and we use eager execution, what we used to do in version one. So as you can see, the code is now so easy to read and it's so easy to understand. You do not need any construction phase and the execution phase. It's just the execution of all the functions what you're doing. Now for eager execution, what you need to do was enable eager execution by using tf dot enable eager execution. But in TensorFlow 2.0, you do not even need to use this line. Eager execution is set to default. Now the question might arise in some of the people's mind is that, what about the graphs then? The 2.0 also lets you get the benefit of working with graph as well. That is the graph mode as well as the eager mode as you can see, both run in a single program. So the graph mode can run inside the eager mode and hence we can get the result. And that's the situation in 2.0 which helps in robust program serialization, easy distribution of programs. Now the second amazing change what happened was the adoption of Keras for high level API. Now Keras can be thought of as a specification for model building at its heart. It works with multiple machine learning frameworks and it provides a shared language for defining layers, the losses and the optimizers. It is now integrated deeply with TensorFlow and it gives a clear path to develop and deploy the models. 
Keras is extended so that all the functions of Keras can be used by just df.keras. Now, if we talk about clarity, there has been the removal of duplicate functionality. Now, the APIs are consolidated and reorganized, and they are consistent now. Now, new exchange formats are defined that will allow you to move those functions throughout the ecosystem. Now, the removal of loads of functions does not mean that there are fewer functions. It's just that there are full APIs at the lower level. New inheritable interfaces for variables as well as checkpoints and layers were also defined, which allows developers to build using TensorFlow on top of their underlying application. Now, next, I'm going to talk about variable sharing. Now, people might say that PyTorch is better as it is more object oriented and has a neat design. So, take an example of variable sharing. Suppose if you want to create a neural network which has two middle layers and since these layers are at the same level So you want the weights to be same Now, firstly what you do is create the placeholders and then create the layers Now to have the same value you need to keep the name of the layer same as well as set the reuse as true Now it's okay, but it will create a problem like name conflicts when you try to retrieve something based on the name So as you can see here, we are given the same name that is layer one to all of these two layers and to the layer 2 we have defined reuse equals true now tensorflow 2.0 will drop this method and use keras extensively so here you create two layers but just one input for both and use it in the form of a parameter so as you can see here we are using keras first we need to import it as you can see we have a and b for layer 1 we're going to use the h1 which is keras layer.dense which has the activation Softmax is the same thing written in a different format and as you can see the code has become much more easier to learn It's not that complex as compared to the previous one So the heavy implementation of Keras has definitely made an improvement in tensorflow 2.0 as gonna be huge for programmers who use Keras extensively now if we talk about the next change what happened in the 2.0 It's the fact that we do not have any more globals now tensorflow 1.x relied heavily on implicitly global namespaces so when you call the tf dot variable it would be put into the default graph and it would remain there and if you lost the track of the python variable pointing to it you could then recover that tf dot variable but only if you knew the name that it had been created with and this was difficult to do so if you were not in control of the variable creation as a result all sorts of mechanism profiliated to attempt to help users find then variables again and for frameworks to find user created variables the variable scopes the global collection helper methods like you get the tf dot get global step the tf dot global variable initializer the optimizers implicitly computing gradients or all the variables and so on the tensorflow 2.0 eliminates all of these mechanisms in favor of the default mechanism Keep track of your variables. If you lose track of tf dot variable, it gets garbage collected. Now the requirement to track variables creates some extra work for the users, but with Keras object, the burden is minimized. Now another major change in the 2.0 is we have functions now, not sessions. So a session dot run call is almost like a functional call. You specify the inputs and the function to be called, and you get back a set of outputs. In TensorFlow 2.0, you can decorate a Python function using tf.function to make it for JIT compilation so that TensorFlow runs it as a single graph. Now, this mechanism allows TensorFlow to gain all the benefit of graph mode as well, such as the performance. The function can be optimized for node pairing, kernel fusion, and much more. If we talk about portability, the function can be exported or re imported allowing users to reuse a shared modular tensorflow function so if we have a look at the example we have here in tensorflow 1.x you would provide an output like something like this you do session dot run you have a function inside you have a placeholder and you provide the input to that placeholder in tensorflow 2.0 all you need to do is just create a function now if we talk about optimizers earlier using an optimizer was different Calling all the optimizers separately was a huge task. Now, there is only one optimizer, which is the tf.keras.optimizers. And as you can see here, all the optimizers such as Adadelta, Adagrad, Adam, Adamax, Natum, 
or the SGD, which is a stochastic gradient descent, all are in the same optimizer, which is the tf.keras.optimizer. All you need to do is initialize it with df.keras.optimizer and you put in any of these values or the hyperparameters. You can set the hyperparameters so easily in this format. And the more important thing is that they work across TensorFlow in and out of eager mode, in distributed or in a single machine. Now let's come to the important part, which is how to upgrade your code. Now there are a lot of migration guides available on the official TensorFlow website and online community forums. Now, there are certain codes which require backward compatibility. For that, we have tf.compact.v1. You can use this command in any of your programs. Now, to upgrade your code, you can use the command tf underscore upgrade underscore v2. And it will run a script. And the script would convert your code from TensorFlow previous version to TensorFlow 2.0. Now, a few things after running this script, what you could notice is that the name of a few functions are changed, new keywords are added, and the orders and the names of the arguments of the functions are also changed. Or some arguments are either added or deleted. But you do not need to worry about that. The script will do all of that for you. Now, the tf underscore upgrade underscore v2 utility is included automatically with the pip installation of tf 2.0 and will help accelerate your upgrade process by converting existing TensorFlow 1.13 Python scripts to TensorFlow 2.0. Now, earlier when I was talking about the compact.v1, so certain API symbols cannot be upgraded simply by using a string replacement. To ensure your code is still supported in TensorFlow 2.0, the upgrade script includes a compact.v1 module. Now, this model will replace calls from tf.f00 with equivalent tf.compact.v1.f00 references. But then again, if the code does not work, then you can use the backward compatibility code as I mentioned earlier. Now, summing it up, all you need to do is just install TensorFlow. So, for that, what you need to do is pip install hyphen new hyphen hyphen pre TensorFlow. You can run your model step by step in eagerly mode by using the flag eagerly as well. All you need to do is provide the run underscore eagerly flag as true and your code will run in eagerly mode. So guys, that's it for TensorFlow 2.0. I hope you got to know about what are the major changes to be made in TensorFlow 2.0 and how is it better from the previous version with the features like eager execution by default using Keras extensively removing the duplicate functions, changing the function names and stuff like that. And I hope TensorFlow 2.0 will have their official release soon for commercial and industrial purposes. So guys, this is the end of the session. If you have any queries regarding this session, please feel free to mention it in the comment section below. I'll drop in a few links in the description that you must check in order to know better about TensorFlow 2.0. Till then, thank you and happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!